All right, then. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope all is well uh, this morning. Uh, my name is Richard Z. Hello, my name is Justin Z. And we're consultants from Global Business Solutions. And our primary objective on our agenda today is to see how we can communicate with our clients effectively through social media. Now, we're going to begin in this realm uh, called communications, where we have several very familiar elements revolving around it. For example, we have the emails and the newsletters. But the question we specifically wish to focus on today is whether or not we can utilize the social media to communicate. And if we can, then that becomes our purpose. That is, can we do it effectively? And we have reason to believe that there's no single better answer than Facebook itself. Facebook was intended, and is still intended today, to improve and increase communications through many aspects, such as online chatting and photo sharing. But before we can get into deeper and more specific details into our strategy, let's first explore the world of social media. Now, there are five pretty self-explanatory aspects regarding the social media. But just to touch base on each of them briefly, for example, immediacy describes the speed at which uh, information is delivered or obtained by the public. Permanence describing how fixed that information is. Access describing how readily available it is for the public to actually get into. The other two aspects, reach, the scope of which that information is obtained and delivered, usability, how convenient the source actually is. All five aspects of social media convey the common theme of flexibility. Flexibility is what the social media provides for us, or more specifically in our case, what Facebook provides for us. It's also exactly what we want in terms of vast communication, as our next clip here would visually show. So without further ado, please enjoy. If I'm not looking for a new car, I'm gonna ask my friends like, hey, is the Mazda any good? Is the Honda any good? Should I get a Prius? The thought was if we recreate that in this kind of digital escape that we've created at Facebook and, and do so in like an authentic way, then there's the potential to multiply the effect at tremendous scale. And it turned out that the presence of media and advertising actually results in more openness, more sharing, more communication than if it was absent. Like, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do with that page. You can install apps, you can post pictures, you can post videos, you can run polls. The value is that we can get our story out in a very meaningful, relevant, authentic way. 1.8 million human connections that we have. The really cool thing about it is like all this activity that's happening on your page gets broadcasted via their newsfeed. We see people who are willing to take content that may be marketing in nature and pass that around. So while we have 200 million users, you know, God knows how many connections we have between those users. It is not just one to many, but it's many to many. And you don't have that same sense in traditional online advertising. Now that everyone here has seen the video, Here's just a few statistics regarding Facebook itself. The first and foremost concerns Facebook's sheer number of users worldwide, currently over 500 billion, and very likely still on the rise. As a matter of fact, I believe a source did say one time that should Facebook be a country unto itself, it would be the third largest in the world by population, just under China and India. And half of all those users log in on any given day with each having an average of 130 friends. Bear in mind also that each of these users are estimated to spend about 700 minutes monthly on their page. And the synergy of these four statistics simply convey the message that Facebook is not only a very viable candidate to spread information, but to spread it quickly and vastly as well. Up until now, we explained why we should use Facebook. Here, we're gonna explain how we're going to apply it. And it's a bit of a two-pronged strategy, actually. The first is what we like to call the hook. And obviously, we need a way to tell the public that we're actually on Facebook. Tell them to join us. Tell them to like us, you know, the, et cetera. So something socially popular, for example, if our budget allows a Super Bowl commercial, just to tell them we're on Facebook. But the point is, once we have the public hooked, we can slowly start reeling them in. And we're going to use Facebook to spread our ads, updates, and information and maybe even start a conversation through microblogging, per se. Concisely speaking, by knowing the public's mind, we'll be able to make up ours as well. And here's just a graphical comparison between Facebook and three other examples of social media. As mentioned before, Facebook has an average population of 500 million users. As compared to Flickr, 
Friendster and Facebook's closest competition up here, Twitter, itself having only about 100 million users. Facebook outnumbers Twitter users, even Twitter, at a ratio of about 5 to 1. Just like anything else, Facebook has its own privacy issues. It's the new frontier for fraud, says Tom Clare, who is the head of an online security service called Bluecoat. And such frauds may just post this link on your Facebook page. Look at the video I found of you. And it sounds exactly what it is designed to do. That is tempt the user into clicking this link, exposing a rather deadly virus that grants access to these cutting crooks into very private and personal information. But the nugget of the idea here is because Facebook is all about openness, it, it promotes these sub-connections and main connections, it ultimately raises a lot of unwanted security issues. But in the end, it is this openness that makes Facebook such a powerful social media weapon. And as our presentation has explained before, we have the statistics and the anecdotes to support its effectiveness. And here's the point, though. Facebook was designed to connect, and connect is exactly what we intend to do. By adjusting our goals to meet the public's demands, we thus create this somewhat of a symbiotic relationship whereby both sides of the party are able to benefit. And that, we think, is a very definable means unto itself. And here are just the sources we used to develop our presentation. That would also conclude our presentation. We would like to take any questions the judges or the audience may hold at this moment. Thank you. <laughs>